In this video, we're going to wrap up uh, describing the thermal history of the universe when the temperature in the range of the temperatures between 10 to 5 Kelvin and 10 to 11 Kelvin. And just to remind you, some of the, the dominant actors in this are photons, the neutrinos, um, the anti-neutrinos, where X represents mu, tau, or electron type, and the electron and the positron. Um, so for example, here are some of the um, reactions that involve neutrinos. So we have the muon type neutrino might interact with the electron to give us a muon plus an electron type neutrino. We can have annihilation of electron and positron gives us electron type neutrino plus an anti-electron type neutrino. Or there can be electrons scattering off of any of these neutrinos. And the point is that there are interactions with neutrinos and all of this matter. And in this temperature period, we're gonna be looking at the freeze out of these interactions and how that affects the uh, entropy and hence the temperature of the photons, electrons, and positrons. All right, so I'll remind you that Last time we derived that the entropy is given by, we use the first law of thermo, thermodynamics to say that the entropy is epsilon plus pressure divided by temperature. We also said that for relativistic particles, the pressure is equal to the internal energy divided by three. We looked at it a couple of ways. One, we looked at, uh, first I just stated it, but we also looked at the distribution function. So that's two pieces of information. <clears throat> we also have that the, the total entropy, so entropy times A cubed during these transitions will be a constant. And that comes from us assuming that the processes happen in an equilibrium way. And combined with this, we need to um, remember that the Friedman equation gives us the evolution of the scale. So a dot over a squared is equal to eight pi g epsilon over three c squared. Now, something else that we derived last time is that the energy density has the same form, whether or not you're dealing with bosons or relativistic fermions. So if the fermions are relativistic, then they will, the energy density will be proportional to T the fourth. So G, the degeneracy factor, AB, where that's the uh, Boltzmann um, A factor, T the fourth divided by two, and then times one, if it's bosons, and times seven eighths for fermions. Now with all of this information, the energy density um, for relative viscous particles, bosons or fermions, uh, Friedman's equation which connects A and the time evolution with epsilon. Um, this connects this last one, S times A cubed equals constant. S is connected to A cubed. 
So S goes as one over A cubed, or you can replace A with S. Um, here we have the pressure related to the internal energy. And then finally, we have the entropy in terms of the uh, energy density and the pressure and the temperature. So we can use all of these to give us an expression for the entropy as a function of time or the entropy as a function of temperature. In Weinberg, um, if we take this equation, these equations, and then plug them into this equation, which is essentially an evolution equation for the universe, then we can get an integral form for time is equal to minus the integral of S prime. So S prime is uh, the derivative of F respect to temperature times dt divided by the entropy at some temperature and then square root 24 g epsilon as a function of temperature. And just remind you that S prime is TS dt. Now the entropy, the entropy of all of these particles together, if they're all going to be relativistic, the entropy goes as T cubed. So in general, for each of these species that are relativistic, I'll write it like this, where I is some species, they're all proportional to T cubed. And in fact, we can write the total entropy of all of these, um, you know, neutrinos, photons, electrons, positrons, as two thirds times n a b t cubed, and this n factor is going to uh, represent the um, addition of all of these parts of the system. So we have photons, electrons, positrons, so on and so forth. And we also have that the energy density will be the same constant n times NAB over two times t to the fourth. So given this solution, we can plug this in and find t in terms of entropy or in terms of uh, temperature, in fact. All right. And this this factor here, this factor n, represents a combination of the degeneracy for each um, species times one for bosons or seven eighths for fermions. So for example, in, if we wanna consider all of the uh, fermions and bosons in this case, then N will be two, this is for photons. So, and then plus seven eighths, this will be for any fermions. And so now we're gonna count the fermions. There's gonna be a six because there are six, there are three neutrino species and then there's the uh, anti-neutrino for each species. Then there's two, uh, then for the electron, there's upspin and downspin. So two is the degeneracy for electrons and then two for the um, positrons. And this, when we simplify this, this equals 43 over four. So the entropy of the entire system, if all of them are relativistic and all of them are interacting, then the entropy for the entire system will be uh, this, except where n is 43 over four. 
Now, as the temperature cools, the total entropy is not going to be given by, not all of the species are going to be relativistic. So the, it's not all, you, you won't count all of those. And as they drop out, the, in, the uh, this number will change. We'll come back to that in a second. We'll, we'll work out a specific example in a moment. Okay, so once, you, once we plug this in into here, we can rewrite this time is equal to, in other words, all I'm doing is I'm going to take these expressions, plug them in here, and I'm gonna rewrite this in terms of temperature. And if we evaluate this, then uh, time is equal to three over 16 pi g n a b. And then the square root of all that times one over temperature squared, and then some plus some constant of integration. And so these are the two forms that Weinberg presents. And I just wanted to present to you where this comes from. It comes from looking at all of these equations here and combining them together to find a solution for time, which is here. And then we have our solution for entropy, which is there and there and the energy density, and we plug it in and we get our time as a function of t squared. Now we can reverse this equation and get uh, temperature in terms of t. So we also have that temperature is proportional to t to the minus two. As as the universe cools, these reactions up here that involve neutrinos, uh, the, as the universe cools and the universe becomes more rarefied, the probability that those reaction wells happen will go down. And at some point, there's a, a freeze out such that the neutrinos are no longer interacting with the other species, namely the photons, electrons, and positrons. And so when we look at freeze out, we want to look at the rate of uh, interactions between the neutrinos and the other species. We want to compare that to the expansion rate. Um, this, I'll just give you what this is in terms of the scales for the neutrinos. Turns out that this is goes as temperature divided by 10 to the 10 Kelvin cubed. And when this is of order one, this is one freeze out of neutrinos. And so we have freeze out of neutrinos at around 10 to the 10 Kelvin. And after this freeze out, the neutrino distribution, because they remain relativistic, will scale as one over A, the scale of the universe. So we have passive, evolution of neutrinos. Okay, so that's what's gonna to happen to the neutrinos. They will, once there's freeze out and there's decoupling of neutrinos and electrons, positive neutrons and the photons, then they will passively cool as the universe expands in this way. Now, What about photons, electrons, and positrons?
We're going to start with that the entropy, the total entropy times, so the entropy density times um, A cubed, so represents a volume. This is equal to a constant. So the total entropy of the photons, electrons, and positrons is equal to the entropy of the photons plus the entropy of the electrons and positrons. Okay, so how do we calculate the entropy of each of those? I'll remind you that the entropy Let's get rid of that equal sign. The entropy is equal to the energy density plus the pressure divided by the temperature. And so the entropy of the photons, electrons, and positrons equals, well, the entropy of photons is 4AB T cubed divided by 3. And then plus, I'm going to combine the entropy due to um, electrons and positrons. There's going to be a factor of four, and that's because we're dealing with um, electrons and positrons, two of them, which each have a de degeneracy of two. And then I'm going to divide by temperature because that's the temperature over here. And now I'm going to write down the integral for the energy density and the pressure. And so this, to find the energy density and pressure, we want to know the momentum of the electrons. We're going to integrate over the momentum of the electrons divided by 2 pi h bar cubed. And then we're going to multiply by, this is the energy. Momentum electron squared plus the rest mass energy squared. So that term will give us the uh, energy density. The uh, momentum is related to, sorry, the pressure is related to the momentum squared divided by three divided by the energy. This will give us the pressure. And then we're going to multiply by the rest of the distribution function, which is 1 over exponential of the energy m squared plus the momentum squared, square root, divided by kt and plus one because we're dealing with fermions. This, this integral, no matter what the momentum is, this integral is the exact integral to find the energy density, the sum of the energy density and the pressure, and hence the entropy. We can take a couple of limits. One, in the limit that we're looking at uh, low temperatures or the momenta are low compared to uh, the rest mass energy, then this integral is going to be small compared to the entropy of the photons. And so you're going to be dominated by the photons. In the limit that the momenta are high, so we're in the relativistic limit compared to the rest mass energy, then this, these, this integral ends up being proportional to T cubed. So let me just write that down. In the relativistic limit, this integral becomes proportional to T cubed in the relativistic limit. So notice that we can combine the two terms, the entropy of the photons and the entropy of the electrons and positrons 
into one term that's proportional to t cubed. And in fact, we can write this entropy of them combined in terms of the entropy for photons and some factor. Okay, and, and what matters is this, this factor is because somehow going to be a function of the temperature. And so let's scale it with the rest mass energy of the electron. This factor in the limit in which the electrons and positrons are negligible, they're non-relativistic, and in fact, maybe they've mostly annihilated and you're just left with a few electrons, and you're mostly dominated by photons, then this factor is going to be one. Otherwise, this factor is going to represent the combination of the entropy of photons, electrons, and positrons. All right, so how does this help us? All right, well, remember that throughout this entire process, before freeze out and after freeze out, the total entropy of the photons, electrons, and positrons are going to be the same uh, when we multiply by a cube. So the entropy of all three of these times a cubed is going to be a constant. Now, I'm just going to take this expression for the entropy and plug it into this expression. And I'm just going to notice that for 4 a, b over 3, those are constants. So I'm not going to worry about carrying those around. So when I take this equation and I put it into here, I get a cubed temperature of the photons cubed times f of x is equal to a constant. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that the temperature of the neutrinos during this whole time scales as 1 over a. Before freeze out, after freeze out, the temperature of the neutrino scales as 1 over a. So I can use this to replace a over here in terms of the temperature of the neutrinos. So now I have the temperature of the photons divided by the temperature of neutrinos cubed times f of x is equal to a constant. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to employ similar tricks. I'm going to I'm going to think about what is f of x and what are the temperatures of the photons in two limits to help me get a relationship between the temperature of the photons and the neutrinos at later times. All right, so for large temperatures, for large temperatures. For large temperatures, in other words, x goes to zero. That's just how I defined x. For large temperatures, we know that the photons, electrons, positrons, and the neutrinos are in equilibrium. In other words, the temperature of the photons in the high temperature regime divided by the temperature of the neutrinos in the high temperature regime, they're in equilibrium, equilibrium, therefore, this is equal to one. You'll see how that's going to help in a second. <clears throat> Otherwise, let's go back to this expression. So we have the temperature of the photons divided by the temperature of the neutrinos times f of x is equal to a constant. In in all of these situations that we're talking about from temperature of 10 to the five to 10 to the 10. So this is equal to a constant. All right, so the temperature at some later time, some cooler time divided by the temperature of the neutrinos cubed times f of x is equal to 
the temperature, um, in the high temperature limit divided by the temperature and the high temperature limit of the neutrinos times F. And this time we're evaluating F at the high temperature limit, which we said was X is going to zero. So F is zero. And we see that the T high uh, divided by T high neutrino, that is equal to one. So this is equal to F of zero. All right, so what is F of zero? In the high temperature limit, we're looking at the entropy of the photons, electrons, and positrons. So in the high temperature limit, what is this X factor? This, this F factor is representing um, how much of the entropy is due to photons and how much of it is due to the relativistic particles, uh, electrons and positrons. So F of zero is equal to, well, we have the photons, it'll be a one. So the entropy due to photons and also the entropy due to relativistic electrons and positrons, which is equal to two times seven eighths. So in the uh, high temperature limit, this factor F is equal to 11 fourths. Now in the low temperature limit, when the temperature is less than MEC squared, in other words, i.e. X is equal to infinity, then the entropy in the low temperature limit, the electrons and positrons, they're going to annihilate. There's not gonna be very many of them. They're also non-relativistic. So they are not going to contribute to the entropy. So the entropy that's just left in the low temperature limit is the entropy due to photons. So this F factor will be one. All right, so now if we go back to the temperature in the low limit divided by the temperature of the neutrinos in the low limit cubed times F of infinity, is equal to F um, in the high temperature limit or F of zero. And if we plug in our values for F infinity equals one, we now have temperature divided by the temperature of the neutrinos cubed is equal to 11 fourths. So after all is said and done, by looking at how the entropy evolves during freeze out and how the different parts contribute to the entropy, we see that the temperature of the photons divided by the temperature of the neutrinos should equal 11 over four to the one third. All right, so let me, I'm going to sketch out what we have derived in the last two lectures. Okay, so I'm plotting log temperature versus log time. We have the evolution of neutrinos. So the temperature of the neutrinos scales as one over A, which also scales as um, time to the minus one half. Oh, I think, did I make a mistake up here? I think I made a mistake. Let's go back and fix that. 
yeah, this should be not t to the minus two, but t to the minus one half. All right, there we go. Now let's go back in and fill in this diagram. So this line represents the evolution of uh, neutrinos. And this is up here around 10 to the 12 Kelvin, around 10 to the 10 Kelvin, the photons, electrons, and positrons, they um, have a different evolution. There's freeze out. And so now they follow a different evolution where still the temperature of the photon scales as one over A, it's just offset from the temperature of the neutrinos by a ratio of 11 over four to the one third. And this part here is when, is when we get neutrino freeze out. And let's see, we were considering temperatures from 10 to the five to 10 to the 10. And that concludes our brief summary into the evolution of the universe from a high temperature of 10 to the 12 to around 10 to the five, including this period in which we have freeze out of interactions of neutrinos with the rest, rest of the matter. And because we considered not the evolution of temperature through this freeze out, but rather we considered that this freeze out would happen in, uh, in an equilibrium way, we could look at the evolution of the entropy throughout this, look at the dominant entropy before freeze out, the dominant entropy, what contributes to the entropy after freeze out. And from that, we were able to infer what is the ratio of the temperatures between the neutrinos and the photons today.